Hi, everyone. Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Now that we have a pretty good understanding of what we need to do in our small rooms in terms of setup and and even our large rooms in terms of reverberation management, it'll be good to look at some of these pictures and learn some things from them. So let's take the first one. We can see in this pic that the treatment is not the right kind. So we have good instincts here, but not the right type. And this is a good example of you can have all the great intentions. There's a saying about what the world is paved with great, great intentions. But if you don't have the technology that has the proper rate and level, you're never going to get a good result. What does that mean practically? Thicker panels. If you look at a picture of a larger room and you see one-inch panels, they're worthless. They won't get enough of the 125 to 500 hertz frequency range that you need to get. So there's your first. And those are six inches deep with any almost any kind of fill material type. So in this next one here, same situation, good instincts, but not enough surface area coverage. When you're treating reverberation management in large rooms, it's 50% of the surface area minimum we have three ratios that we use 35 50 and 65 50 is about average some a little less some a little more depending on congregation age and, and things like that because as the congregation gets older you have to add more absorption you have to have a lower reverb time because reverberation is bothersome it can actually give you know people people headaches and, and stuff like that so you, if you're a church and your product is music and voice, and if your music and voice gives the congregation headaches, where are you? See, so you have to be kind of careful with, with all of that. All right. Okay, these next photos have to do with overcrowding. You have to realize when you have two channels, Everything, every space around the speakers, behind the speakers, on the side of the speakers, above the speakers, that's all important space. That's all space where we call it free space. You, you have to leave stuff out of that, especially between the speakers. There's a lot of interplay that goes on between the left and the right channels in terms of energy. So you don't want equipment racks and gear and stuff like that you know, filling that area up, building monuments or shrines, so to speak, to, you know, the music gods. I don't know what you want to call it, but that area has to be open. Now, I get it that you have to put equipment somewhere. So put it on the floor between the speakers. Don't have it very high, 12 inches maximum. Put it on platforms, isolate it. Cable runs will be shorter. Cables are expensive. Don't have the height of the gear exceed the bottom of the mid-frequency driver. Keep that open, that area open between the speakers. In this picture here, you can see the subwoofer <laughs> squeezed between a speaker and the wall. Why would you put two energy-producing sources next to a room boundary surface. Our goal is to minimize pressure and reflections in small rooms. Those are our two main issues. Setup is a great place to start to minimize that. So our setup here is in big trouble. So don't clutter that area between the speakers and get your setup right. Definitely don't put any speaker or energy producing object next to a room boundary surface. We're trying to minimize distortions, not add to them, right? Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. 
We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.